And it's Ken Kreitzer for Cam Dads Media. We are at the Army Navy game and the March on. And the Naval Academy band is coming in to lead off to March on. The Brigade of Midshipmen, always a thrill. It is amazingly nice here today. Uh, light cloud cover, but it is uh, very mild. It's in, it's in the 50s. It's a gorgeous day. I'd like to hear the introductions of each of the Navy units. Move. Navy's units are a little bigger than armies. Their uh, company formation. leadership of the Brigade of Midshipmen out to the front. Navy units marching on. They'll face the, uh, I believe that's the east side of the last game. Uh, all new big scoreboards installed here. And the Kraft family, we heard Robert Kraft address the Army Navy Gala last night. Very, very gracious in his support of the military and how much they were excited about hosting this game. I think it's going to be back here. Folks here in Massachusetts have gone all out. There's signs all over the, the highways welcome you to the area. Police all over, signage. And Rhode Island, the midshipmen, a lot of the midshipmen stayed in Providence last night. I actually saw Senator Jack Reed this morning, who was one of the hosts of that. And we also saw the Secretary of the Navy, Carlos Del Toro, yesterday. See if you can hear that company later. And uh, Secretary Del Toro, in his remarks, reminded all that over 300 U.S. Navy ships are at sea as we play the game today. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of sailors and Marines deployed so that we can enjoy our freedom here in the United States at home and enjoy things like college football. Uh, Secretary Del Toro is uh, from, uh, uh, I believe, Cuba. And he came to New York, grew up in Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan. And when he became a commander of a U.S. Navy destroyer, uh, first captain of the ship, commander, 
of the Bulkley. Uh, they had the commissioning in New York, and we were able to get a bunch of our American Legion members uh, to that event. Through the help of the USO, always got to thank the USO. One of the reasons we are doing what we do at Camp Beth Media is the USO and some opportunities they gave us, took a chance on with us. And so one of the USO leaders at the Army Navy Gala last night. Maybe it's a big band. They have a couple of groups. They have a big drum and uh, cadet, excuse me, midshipman drum and bugle corps in addition to their uh, academy band, which is a professional band, just like West the West Point band. Okay, it's starting to get a little breezy. And a little, I'd say it's now almost overcast. It was absolutely gorgeous. We walked around Boston this morning. And it was just gorgeous by the Prudential Center area. And we're going to have the colors coming in. Such an extraordinary moment in college sports, it transcends college sports to a great American moment. The march on of the Brigade of Midshipmen and the march on of the Corps of Cadets of the Army Navy game. They've been doing this over 100 years. In fact, this is 124th edition. And missed a couple of years through things like wars. See a few exchange students. Uh, see uh, someone in the midshipman lines with a blue overcoat. I think that uh, that uh, is a cadet from the Air Force Academy. You also have exchange students from Allied nations. Uh, there's uh, at West Point. I'm sure it's the same in Annapolis. That there's provisions for 50 exchange students. Now the colors are coming in. I want to get a photo. Midshipman from the Coast Guard Academy. Good day. And this is Unit Company 17. We can see their banner. Such a big moment for these young Americans, especially the seniors. They have freshmen who get invited out here. Not everybody comes in and does march on. This is Company 18. Sorry about that. And Company 19 coming out. We are so privileged to be able to present this coverage to you. Midshipmen from all across the country, all 50 states. Have to move back just a little bit. These companies, they are eight abreast. I don't know if there's company 20. Up 
Anthony, 23. tomorrow but today it is a perfect early December day in Foxborough Massachusetts it's a lot colder here when we were for the media day last week company 25 This doesn't happen. This is practice and rehearse. They rehearse this out at Annapolis before they came out here. There's a lot of pride in making sure this looks good, and, and obviously the everybody compares each other. How Navy looks, how Army looks. But America's best and brightest. Capable and willing to sacrifice and serve. These folks don't get much of the summer off. Company 28. A little frame that looks straight ahead. Most of them with their white scarves on. Looking good. Brigade of Midshipmen on the field. Gillette Stadium, first time ever at the Army Navy game, America's game. And they will uh, do a couple of cheers, pass their best comments to, uh, to the Army fans. Yes, sir, regards to the Army. Same this year.
two of the academies have been a little nicer to each other this year. Notice that the uh, Army Navy Gala, both superintendents, uh, were very, very gracious and cordial to each other. Of course. But it's a point of pride for all of the Navy veterans out there and Marine Corps veterans. And uh, they will be sitting in the, uh, looks like the north east corner of the stadium. And Army will be sitting on the other side, on the right side. Uh, separated. One year I sat uh, taking photos under a goalpost down in Washington. And uh, boy, comments going back and forth. Our favorite story was uh, when Army went to the Pentagon, the Army football team, after receiving the Commander in Chief trophy from President Trump at the White House in the Rose Garden. Uh, General Milley gave his talk, and as you imagine, a little rah rah. Then he said, You know, especially the seniors, you know, you guys are going to be out there serving, deployed overseas a, a year from now. And you're gonna be damn glad those Navy and Air Force pilots are flying over your heads. I mentioned that to General Milley when he spoke at graduation uh, at uh, West Point and he chuckled. But it's true. It is so true. Uh, my dad, a World War II Army officer, uh, led young Americans in uh, Italy. Uh, the 91st Infantry, they landed in Rome in the summer of 44 and worked their way all the way north through the Apennines Mountains to past Florence to the Po Valley and eventually Trieste. And they had the Tuskegee Airmen supporting them. Tuskegee Airmen mostly flew missions in Italy. I mean, of course, lots of other Army Air Force and perhaps Navy too. But I always think of the Tuskegee Airmen flying over my father's head in. Uh, World War II, 1944, 1945, Italy. Of course, my family tradition, we had two Navy officers in World War II. Um, my aunt, Florence Leahy, uh, called, took the call to service in 1943 when the president said they needed 50,000 more nurses to join the military. So she joined the Navy from Pelham, New York. Ended up serving, uh, Full tour, I think 27 years. Retired a lieutenant commander uh, during the uh, mid 1960s. Went on to teach at Salve Regina College in Newport, Rhode Island. She worked a lot of her career with uh, Marines in Camp Lejeune and San Diego. And what a sight as the midshipmen begin to uh, exit. The field. I guess they're exiting the exit they came in, a little different than past years. Usually they come in one side and go out the other. It's all dependent on the stadium set up and uh, looks like access is better from, from the north end. The south end is where they have the uh, big light tower. They just built the big new scoreboard. And then my, uh, my uncle Raymond Lee, he was uh, a Navy fighter pilot and test pilot. Uh, he had gone to NYU, for, got an engineering degree, joined the Navy. He had worked for the Martin Aircraft Company and joined the Navy. And the story, the family story was that he would test planes at Pearl Harbor before they put them on the carriers, make sure they were working right. And then he went on to a career uh, working for RCA in the 50s when that was like working for Google. And then he worked for Grumman they built the lunar excursion module that sent a man to the moon and brought Apollo 13 back. We always watch that movie, love that movie with Tom Hanks and, the, and that crew. Um, and he was a big astronomy fan. He would always, when he came to our house, he would bring photos from his backyard astronomy. 
couple of the uh, companies in front of us for starting to leave. This is a big moment. This is something they always remember and the parents really love it. Those are all parents up there on the Navy side. And I can see that they're uh, leaving. Uh, again, there's the flag, the colors. And uh, we're very proud as we call ourselves Canvas Media, and that stands for Cadets, Midshipmen, Military, and Veterans, who we have told the story of since 2008. For many years, we did a weekly show on WVOX. Sadly, the radio station went out of business in September after 55 years. But, uh, we cover New York City Fleet Week extensively. We work the Navy with the Navy League in New York City. Frank Russo uh, just completed a tour as its president, and this year included the commissioning of the new littoral combat ship, the uh, USS Cooperstown. Got a gala uh, dedication in uh, commissioning in uh, in early May, and then we cover New York City Fleet Week. We also covered. Uh, commissioning of a Coast Guard cutter last year, the Sutpen, uh, one of their new um, ocean-going cutters, and it's stationed in the middle of the east now. And we are always thinking of those in the Navy serving overseas on two aircraft carriers in the Middle East right now. That's by a 10 ships and submarines with them, and, uh, and Navy serving in the Pacific, Indochina, I think they, Indochina, I think they call it now, um, and the submarines. Increasingly, the Navy is depending on submarines to protect its power. And, you know, in this era of drones, sending a submarine is a little safer than an aircraft carrier or a big cruiser. Nobody belongs in this bench area. They don't want anybody here. Okay. Push back. Okay. All the way to the, to the line. All the way back. Okay. Well, we're moving. Okay. Well. Okay. Anyway, we'll. Uh, Got a new uh, direction on uh, where we can stand. Everything's a little bit better managed here in Foxborough than it's been some of the past years. A lot of attention to detail. So we're just completing the uh, march on of the midshipmen from Annapolis. And then Army is going to be coming out in just a moment. We're going to see where we can stand for that. Well, the last of the midshipmen are now leaving the field. And boy, it is all of a sudden getting a little bit more brisk. Uh, you know, you come to New England, you got to expect a little bit of weather. And it is, uh, this morning it may have hit 50 degrees, but all of a sudden it's getting a little cooler, a little damp. They're talking about uh, some significant rain tomorrow, but nothing today that I've heard of. But uh, as we all know, uh, nothing, rain doesn't stop the U.S. Army. It's one of Jeff Munkin's favorite expressions. So that's the uh, completion. Uh, last of the uh, Annapolis units, bands are moving off the field. And as soon as they're done, the uh, will make their appearance, led by Martine Vandewall, 
first captain. His brother was first captain about uh, three, four years ago. So leadership runs in their family. I think the Brandon Wingham, who was first captain uh, about 10 years ago. And he's also an Army football player. And the year of the Army-Navy game, he was uh, hurt. He had a bad, he hurt his shoulder in, um, during the season, so he couldn't play. Uh, so he dressed to uh, leave the Corps in, and then switched back to his um, wear a jersey and sweatpants during the game, he's telling us. Now he's, in, he's a helicopter pilot, Special Forces, and going to a school. We've got a, just did an interview, it's on our YouTube page. But anyway, um, want to talk Navy and uh, send our appreciation especially to uh, Rear Admiral Hal Robinson, who's a close friend that we work with on a number of projects, including updating the chaplain's monuments at Arlington National Cemetery. We have names of 81 chaplains. We have been working for 10 years to try and add to the monuments, and he's been leading us in that effort. A uh, truly dedicated uh, uh, veteran, uh, 35 years in the U.S. Navy. So we're going to uh, say goodbye, and we'll come back in a moment. I want to change positions. This is Ken Kratzer for Cam Vets Media at the Army-Navy game in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Thanks for watching.